everyone. How are you? Can you hear me well? If not, I will shout. Um, uh, I have a very strong voice, and, and, and I hope you can hear me at the back. And this is going to be, hopefully, quite of a cozy experience for all of you. I'm going to bring you through the Heineken roller coaster of emotion, and hopefully everyone will enjoy it and will feel emotional about it. The guys at the first row and the guys behind us. My name is Alfonso, as Hank said. I'm coming from Amsterdam all the way to Nashville. Very happy to be here. I'm very happy as a good Spaniard to enjoy some good sun, which we are not getting in Amsterdam lately. So that's very good news for me. Um, today I'm going to take you through a journey of creativity. And creativity for Heineken is about creativity that matters. It's creativity that sparks emotion, but mostly triggers something in people, whatever it is. And we will see a little bit of that later. I want to share with you a story. When I was about to present this same thing, or a very similar thing, in a conference in Istanbul a few months ago, the night before the presentation, I was in my room, and I was really scared. And I felt a lot of fear because on the first slide, what I was going to show there was um, a piece of creativity from one of our most successful and fastest growing brands, Tecate, which is a Mexican brand grow growing very fast in Mexico and in the US. But that one minute of creativity is quite controversial. I've seen that probably 100 times. And every time I see that, I have teary eyes. Now, I felt really scared about sharing that in Istanbul with 500 people, knowing that 10 days before there had been a terrorist attack in Istanbul and a coup to the government. So for me, the fear was, how is this going to land? Am I going to screw up my story in the first one minute? The morning after I woke up, and while having breakfast, I found the courage to share it with the audience. And that was one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the last few months. And that lesson was taught to me by the audience when I got a huge round of applause after the video was played. And that taught me the lesson of if you believe in something and if you believe something is right, just do it. And I want you to experience that one minute clip here at Nashville today. A man is not defined by his strength his image, his courage, his anger, his toughness, or his sexual orientation. A man is defined by how he treats a woman. If you're not a man, you don't deserve a Tecate. You don't need your business. Don't reach for one. We hope you hate it. You're not one of us. Not one more for you. Tecate, standing against domestic violence. All right, that's it. Every time I see this, I feel a, a huge emotion running and a huge pride of working for a company like Heineken, which is there to take these bold statements quite edgy on a very big brand that is delivering lots of profits for the organization. And that's kind of our tone of voice. And that's why I'm referring back to this creativity that matters. It's about making a statement, and sometimes it will be and tangible output, like the personality profile that you get through doing the interview of Go Places, and we'll see a little bit about that later, or intangible, which is we're making a statement as an organization and we're sending a message. But now, it was not always easy. As Hank was saying, we didn't start with like a big team of employer branding, or with a big budget, or with a team of employer branding people. At Heineken, we did not have an employer brand two and a half years ago. And this started in a small room in Amsterdam with two people and 20,000 euros. So this was treated literally like a startup in a big company. We had a very big idea, and we started super small. And the whole thing was about pitching the findings to the marketing community, 
It was about crowdfunding, getting money on different stages, and building that organically to what Go Places became a few months later. So the ambition was, was big, and some of the learnings, already bringing them here, of the things that have made this campaign successful are captured here. The one thing about branding, which for us was important, is that we do not see this as an employer brand. We do not think necessarily EVP. We think about brand building. And we think about one story, the Heineken story, that we can tell in different ways to different audiences. But at the end of the day, a candidate or a consumer or someone who is not a candidate or consumer are funny enough the same people. So the thing is, we're building the Heineken story, we're building a brand, we're positioning the brand, but we're not necessarily keeping that to us in HR. And that's where the collaboration across functions, which is kind of a no-brainer, and I know all you guys in your companies are working on that, but it's very true. And it's about true collaboration. It's not about getting the buy-in for someone, updating the marketing community, getting a little bit of feedback. It's really about working together from day one. And that's what we did. So the team was, was like a very matrix team of 20 people, sometimes 40 people, of different marketeers, different people for comms, uh, being part of that team and being part of that journey at different stages, bringing their own capabilities and skills. And that was true for the project from the very beginning. And the other thing is the globalization approach that we chose to go for. We are a very, very decentralized uh, organization where even we operate under different names, not Heineken in some countries like Nigeria, for example. And still, we honor and celebrate that difference and that locality of our business. And that's why we wanted to inspire people with a big story. And still, we allowed all the operating companies to give it the local top spin, the local flavor to the campaign to make it work for their audiences. Now, the ambition was very big. And that's why I said we started with a very big idea. Heineken is the, the biggest and the most premium global brand in the beer industry. And we didn't have an employer brand, but we had this big dream of making Go Places the biggest and most successful employer brand globally. Very big idea, but believe me, many sleepless nights. When we were in a very small team, and we went to bed thinking, this is not going to fly. And then the morning after, we said, this is going to fly. <laughs> and then the day after, we said, this is not going to fly. And the morning after, this is going to fly. So it really went like that, like almost like startup. And then what things we put in place to make this work? Very basic stuff, a lot of faith and belief in the big idea, a lot of positive and contagious energy, and for sure, a lot of resilience. And that's, that's what made Go Places, what Go Places was later. But now we started, and I'm going to take you through this journey of three very simple phases of what we did. And we treated our brand, our Go Places brand, like we treat any of our consumer brands. Through this journey, identifying first the brand DNA, then positioning the brand to our target consumers and candidates, and then creating a story that could appeal to those in the target group. Now, this might sound very simple. We spent the first six or eight months doing one thing, only one thing, to put the uniqueness of the Heineken culture on a piece of paper. And this is the result of that. Of course, millions of research pages and everything, but this is the result of that. Three brand values that represent who we are as an organization. The first is fame. And this is very much encapsulating that moment when I get the question of, who do you work for? And I say, Heineken. And what I get back is a big smile. And people saying, oh, cool. Oh, I like Heineken. Oh, what a cool company, what cool ads. So that kind of pride of belonging to a huge legacy of 150 years and employees wanting to continue that legacy of the Heineken family for another 150 years, that's really very much a value for the organization. Adventure. This is really represented by the spirit of one of our icons, Freddie Heineken, the third generation of the Heineken family, when he said, you know, I throw a dart in the world map and I said, that's the next country I want to share my beer in. It's that spirit of entrepreneurs that started this company and is really a way of seeing business, a way of believing in business, and a way of living within the organization. And finally, friends. You say, why friends? For us, it's not about building relationships or connecting or networking. That felt too clinical for us. That felt too 
professional to us. We are very much about friendship. And this is really the spirit that you see in any office around the world on a Friday afternoon at five when all employees get together at the bar in the building to enjoy a couple of beers, regardless of the department, the hierarchy, whatever. You can see easily in Amsterdam the CEO having a beer and having a chat with one of our interns at the bar on any, you know, any Friday that you can imagine on the year. So that's kind of, that friendship is what really uh, identifies Heineken and that's very special about the company. But now, then we said, we kind of know who we are. Who are we targeting? And consciously, we didn't go for age group or geography. We just went for one insight that would tell us a lot about who do we want in our organization. And everything boiled down to this one insight. Don't mold me, stretch me. We really embrace that diversity of different profiles, different people, just people that have one thing in common. They want to be stretched, they want to be challenged, they want to go beyond their own borders. That's what Heineken is about. And it's not only diversity of experience in terms of from country A to B. Going places is not about geography only. It's about diversity of experience with different people, different brands, different projects. That's what Go Places is about. It's going places mentally as well for us. But now we have the kind of who are we, who do we want to bring in the organization. We were clear about that. The question was, how do we create story that helps us connect with that target audience? What do we do? What's the vehicle that we will use to connect? And before GoPlace was born, we took this as the two sources of inspiration. Freddie Heineken, one of the icons for the company, and a book that most of you, I'm sure, here in the US know very well from Dr. Seuss, all the places you go. And Freddie was an inspiration because he talked a lot about hiring for personality already 40 years ago. He said, I'm not looking for, for tailwind managers, I'm looking for headwind managers. I know everyone coming to me has a nice CV, a nice experience, and a lot of knowledge, and a big brain. I'm looking for attitude, I'm looking for personality. And you hear influencers like Richard Branson talking about that big time as well. So that was really um, an inspiration for us to create an interactive interview and to look for attitude and personality. The other one is all the places you go. Many of you might will know the book. It was really inspirational for us because of the messages behind and because of the tone of voice and the music in how the book is written. We loved it. And we loved the idea of it doesn't matter if you go left or right, up or down, it's about the journey, it's about who you meet, it's about the experience that you accumulate, and it's about enjoying the journey and not the end game. And that's how Go Places was, was born. It was the combination of these two things that led to creating something that was done, had not been done before, an interactive interview with the idea of I will give you and you and you an interactive experience, very engaging, but also we want to give you something back, whatever you decide to do later. A personality profile that will help you learn about yourself. But none of that could have been possible without our pioneers. We are brand builders and we are brewers. That's the two things that we do well. The rest of things we do on average below par. We cannot feel proud, we just run the business with that. But we are brewers and we are brand builders. But what we are mostly is we are pioneers. And those are our employees. And everyone you see in the campaign, except for the one actor who is the interviewer, are Heineken employees. And you can imagine, and I wanted to bring this to you for a little bit of fun. This is taken with my phone, uh, backstage kind of things. When we had employees in a film studio in the mornings on styling, makeup, following the instructions of a director, that was pretty amazing for them. We treated them so much as pioneers that even when the campaign was about to be launched, we launched in a red carpet sneak preview with our pioneers and they were the first one to share the content internally and to become the ambassadors before the campaign went out anywhere. You can see them here as well. I'm here with Leonard, the director of Go Places. Hi, Leonard. Hello, Stephanie. So, normally you work with professional actors. What was it like to have Heineken employees starring in Go Places? Uh, to be very frank, on the very first moment it was worrisome. I thought like, oh my God. It, it, if it, by the time it was proposed, like we're going to have people from Heineken in front of the camera, I said, like, you mean people from the corporate world, suits, 
They, you want them in the ca in front of the camera? So, yeah, 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 we want them really. Yeah, but it can be very techy and it can be very boring. And I, I was kind of worried that that was going to go into that direction. But the agency really promised me like Heineken people are absolutely pleasant people to see. And you'll see it in front of the camera. Trust me, trust me. So I gave them the trust, just like they gave the trust to me as we progressed through this whole film. And the interesting thing was that she was 100% right, even more right. It totally changed my mind. I don't think this film would have been any better with professional actors. It, this really made it relevant. It, the people are so genuinely honest. Their, their smiles are the real Heineken smiles that you see in the face. And, I didn't have and it almost sounds like a no-brainer to have your employees in your campaigns, but we still see many companies having actors or very good-looking people in their campaigns representing those generic values. In our case, it was a true fight with the film director who did not know anything about employer branding or HR or talent acquisition and who thought, you know, film studio, 70 to 80 people, non professionals, that's going to be a mess. The funny thing is we, we changed his mind and to a point that he said, this has been one of the best experiences ever working with non professionals. And that was a really fun, I wanted to bring you kind of a neutral kind of view on this. But now let me take you to the, the candidate journey that you will all experience today. So today we will be one big interviewee here. The journey for us is, is a very simple one in four steps. First, we drive traffic to our main asset of the campaign, the interview, using social media or also face-to-face -face events. It can be print, it can be anything. Mostly about people watching our manifesto, our one-minute manifesto, which is basically triggering people to know more triggering curiosity and mystery. And people feel a lot of energy and say, yeah, I want to know more about Heineken. So for us, that's what allowed us to drive a lot of traffic to the Go Places website, which is of course in local languages, it's localized to many different countries, but it's one instance. And from there, you get your personality profile, one in eight. With that, you can do whatever you like. You can share with your friends, you can talk about it, but also you can say, hey, I loved this interview and I love this company. I want to apply to Heineken. So that will take you through our job portals, our LinkedIn career pages locally, and so on and so forth, so that people can apply to a job. Now, what you get in the interviews, one in eight profiles. None of the profiles is good or bad, and we are not looking for two or three of the profiles. All of them are good, and all of them are profiles of people that could very well join Heineken. The interview for us is a way to take people through the Heineken world for people to decide by themselves, this is a company for me or this is not. It's more of a deselection process for individuals to make a choice. But none of this is better than other. And all of them, that diversity, we open to that as long as you want to be stretched and challenged and go places with us. Okay? Now, let me show you the manifesto. We ask, got a minute? You think, wait a minute. You say, I know you. We think, but do you? We say, come along. You ask, but where to? We say, you think about it. You think. You say, yes. We guessed you'd say yes. You ask where to start. We say, follow your heart. You think we're one brand. We say, we are more. You ask, how much more? We say, so much more. More than 250 brands, more than 70 countries. You ask, will you mold me? We say, we will stretch you. You think you can be more. We say, you can be more! You ask, how much more? There is so much more in store. Learn a craft, learn a trade. There's, There's a, a journey, journey to be made. made. Choose, Choose a path, path or go off it. it. It's up to you. You thought, you asked, now we say, do. You think, do I have what it takes? We know you have what it takes. You ask, where will we go? We say, we don't know. You show us. All right, that's it. So that's what we, thank you. Thank you. So that, that's the first asset that any consumer or candidate got in touch with through many different platforms. And then from here it's like, am I excited to take this interview, whatever it is? So put your hands up if you would like to take the interview, if you feel excited about that. All right, that's the good news. The bad news now is I need a volunteer. <laughs> so someone that raised his or her hand, who wants to volunteer to take the interview? Yeah, we have in here the first row. Yes, all right. Thank you, big round of applause. Hello. Hello. What's your name? 
Julie, Julie from Netflix. All right, Julie, thank you for volunteering. So what Julie is going to do now, she's very courageous. We heard about courage earlier this morning to do an interview in front of 400 people. So she's quite exposed right now. Right, Julie? Yeah. That's good. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going we're gonna to take the interview together. And the interview, when you get into the website, is very simple. You click on the interview, and it's interactive. So it will throw at you up to 12 questions. And Julie will have a choice between answer A or answer B. And all those responses will lead to Julie's profile. OK. So let's make this uh, slightly bigger here. And Julie, it's, it's all yours. Welcome to what we like to call the interview. Why an interview, you ask? Well, that's because there's not an awful lot we know about you. So this is your chance to choose. You see, life is a constant stream of choices. Each choice leads to the next, and it's the sum of all these choices that defines who you are. So, who are you? Well, as a curator of choices, it's up to me to find out. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I have 12 questions, and you'll have just five seconds to answer each one. We'll be done in no time. <laughs> the choice is yours. Sometimes the answer might not be as obvious as it first seems. So I suggest you answer honestly. For example, would you rather be A, world famous, or B, have strong roots? And I'd like you to answer by clicking in five, four, three, two. All right, but did you know the Heineken Company actually offers both strong roots and world fame? With more than 250 brands in over 70 countries, you want to go places. The choice seems clear. Now, let's say it's time for dinner. Do you go for A, the surprise menu at a new restaurant, or B, the classic dish at your local eatery? It's up to you, the surprise. Or the class. I'm sure you're curious to know what the surprise dish was. Well, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Perhaps you'll start as a brewer for Heineken and work your way up to supply chain director of the Americas. Or perhaps you'll choose a different path. Starting in legal affairs for Birra Moretti in Italy, on your way to becoming brand manager of Tiger Beer in Vietnam. You'll grow, you'll progress, and you'll meet a few critics along the way. You'll listen and consider what they have to say, but how do you respond? Do you A, stay true to your path, or B, change your direction? Hmm, tricky one, isn't it? Let's not forget we're brewers, and brewers need brewing tanks. Bring them in. Would you rather A, brew a Heineken beer proven to be a success? Thank you, Josephine. <laughs> or B, brew your own speciality brand without a proven recipe. Heineken or your very own brand. You're doing great, but if you want to go places, we're going to have to speed things up a bit. No time to think, just decide. OK, guys, let's give our interviewee five questions in a row, and we'll give you just three seconds to choose. Ready? The best way to carry the weight of the world is through hard work or humor. Which superpower would you rather have? The ability to go without sleep or to open people's eyes? Do you prefer to look at things from a different angle or label things as they are? Which of these rooms makes you more? <laughs> <laughs> that red doorknob is a hint. You can actually click. Let me introduce you to the family. Like Maya, you could start in Poland, move to France, then on to Brazil in one year. Or Carlos, from Panama to Amsterdam. Camille has worked for Desperados, Heineken, Pelforth, Strongbow. And would you believe Dolph here, who runs the show for Heineken in Mexico, double-clicked on all my questions using two computer mice. He scored very highly. Are you satisfied with your answers so far? 
Let's get some fresh air. Well, you may shoot a big TV commercial for Strongbow in downtown Johannesburg. Do you prefer to A, show your passion in front of a camera, or B, observe everything from behind the camera? Behind or in front of the camera? You're almost finished. I have one last remaining question, after which we'll quench our thirst for the results. Which best describes you? A. I do not depend on other people. I have worked hard on my own to get where I am. Or B. I depend on my friends, and they know they can always depend on me. Your final choice, independent or... Congratulations! You have officially completed the interview. You may well be invited for a real-life interview with yours truly, or possibly someone else from my team. Now, I'm sure you're curious to see the results. So follow me, if you will. And don't forget to share your CV from your LinkedIn profile with us after you have seen my interpretation of what I believe to be your true character. Wow, the moment of truth now, <laughs> Yuli. Oh, I was supposed to click on it? Oh. No, it's coming up. So, Yuli is an investigator. I guess that makes sense since I'm a sorcerer. I mean, Julie here, because we say uh, we don't want to mold people, is it feels that you are more of an investigator, but you have traits of other profiles. So we allow people to just experience a little bit of profiles with traits that they've shown during the interview. So they can be a little bit of an achiever or a little bit of an initiator or even a little bit of sometimes of a traditionalist. And from here, what I was saying, you can either go and apply to jobs uh, via the career site, and then if you are a Nigerian candidate doing this in Nigeria, it will take you to Nigerian jobs. And also, you can share this in social media to say, hey, fun, engaging, Heineken is not for me, and still I want to share this with my friends for a little bit of fun and to create a conversation around personality. That's what it is. Thank you, Julie. Cool, for thank you. Here. And now, a little bit, just a little bit to, to wrap up about the, uh, the launch of the campaign and the results that we've achieved uh, so far. It was launched initially in about 20 countries in all the continents. Not only launched, with these 20 countries, we were working together as a team to co-create the campaign for 18 months. So they were very much part of this, to a point that something that you don't see in the interview, there are up to five questions which are localized based on IP address. So for example, when you have the first question on do you go for A, world famous, there's always a Heineken, and B, strong roots in Nigeria, it will show Star, which is one of our African brands, or in Singapore, it will, it will show Tiger. This is one example of five localizations. Now we launch in many more, the whole Asia is live, but these were the first bunch of people that launched the campaign locally. Now this is some example of activations. Some activations were great and very close to the brands. Some others were within the framework, but I did like this when I saw what they had done. But it's great, because at the end of the day, when things are happening in an operation, it means that the brand is living, and brands live far from the center, very far from the center. So we try not to control too much and to allow creativity and the markets to do their own thing around the tone of voice and the essence of pioneers build legacies and go places. Now, some of the results, I'm not gonna bore you with all these numbers, but only one or a couple that I want you to look at, because those made us feel really proud about the campaign. The first one was one of the sleepless nights kind of thing. Completion of the interview. We were for weeks really scared about one thing. The interview is about six minutes. More than 45 seconds to 60 seconds in social media is a life. The drop off rates are huge. So what we said is six minutes? All right, we're Heineken, so it's not gonna be super difficult to drive traffic to start. Now, how many people will be there for six minutes? I wish to say, listen, we don't want to detract from the purpose behind this and from making this a meaningful experience with a true personality profile. If you reduce this to 60 seconds, you can do a fun thing, but it's a little bit meaningless. So we stick to the, 60, uh, to this, to the six minutes, and then the results were quite amazing. So the engagement is high. More than 330,000 interviews started, and about 60% of those are fully completed to the end, which is super high. So it made us feel really, really happy. And the other one is media coverage. Out of these 350 stories or so, more than 200 are not coming from HR or employer branding publications. These are coming from marketing publications. 
And that shows a little bit the collaboration we did with marketing to make this a true brand and not only an employer brand. Just to highlight one, as Hank was saying, in Ad Week they said something like, Heineken just made an HR campaign that's as cool as any consumer ads, it's done. Because by the way, for those of you guys that saw the video, the candidate a few years ago, that was not employer branding. That was an initiative from marketing that HR didn't know about. But it was a great inspiration for us as well now. And the guy that worked on that campaign worked on this one as well now. Now, we are at Talent Connect, so I would be too bad if I don't show any LinkedIn numbers. So I will show you some LinkedIn numbers, which were all, let's say, very good. Um, and all of them, like, we grew a lot on brand awareness, on conversion, on more hires, more interest, for sure. Career page viewers, uh, more than tripled. Uh, we were on eight out of 10 against peers before the campaign. Now we are uh, on position one. Followers double uh, after the campaign. So the launch was in September. So really, when you see those peaks, it's right after the launch of the campaign in September last year. Also, uh, many more job applications. Now, on average, about 260 job applications per job. And this one, which is my favorite, which uh, my, my, my friends from LinkedIn in Europe, they really helped to put this together. Because we were looking at quality of hire, and now we look at performance after six months and after 12 months. But also we wanted to have a little bit of an insight, talking about insights today, on how are these applicants behaving? Where do they go? Because we hire out of these applicants less than 5% in our organization. The question was, how can we check the quality of these other applicants? Now, if you look at the companies that they go to when they don't come to Heineken, it's showing lots of companies that we will benchmark against in many different practices. So it, it kind of shows that the candidates that don't get to Heineken go to really good places and really good companies. And that's, that's a very nice sign. And with that, a couple of uh, takeaways from my side. Um, one really important for us, when we create what is the temperature check on emotion. And then the question is for you guys, when you create a campaign, but also when you work on a project on a new idea or an innovation, what is the emotion that you want to create in people? Think emotion first. Because whatever you do, we create an emotion. Whatever you deliver to your consumers or candidates. So the question is, what emotion do you want to create? And take it from there. And the other one for us, and for me personally, is stay true to who you are. Don't pretend too much to be someone that you are not. Only to look at people to learn from them, of course. A little bit of that. But then when it comes to your brand DNA, when it comes to telling your story, stay true to yourselves. Don't create something generic just for the sake of trying to be sexy, because people smell it, and it becomes a non-credible story. And with that, I will be around this day. Any questions now or later, I will be super happy to connect, to make new friends. Thank you for your attention. Can you hear me? Okay. Hey. Hi. Hi. My name is Amir, and I we lead employer right? branding at Here. Netflix. Huh? We connected. We did. Netflix as well. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so love this campaign. I would love to hear if you could talk a little bit about how did you get people to buy into something so large in terms of budget efforts? Because I think there's a lot of action to bias with low hanging fruit in terms of you know, they expect uh, smaller projects quicker when really the long game is something like this. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you made that yeah. happen? Yeah. Thank you for the question. Absolutely. Um, really, the, the tipping point was to open this up to the marketing community by pitching to them the findings of what the culture is about. So it was not to convince HR or the HR leadership team. It was to go to marketing. Because the good news is that great marketeers, as we have in Heineken, when they see on a piece of paper culture and potential, they can see through the paper. And then what they saw was a huge opportunity to connect with our candidates and consumers from a different perspective, from a different channel, with a different story. So then the buying was simple because they saw the typical thing of what's in it for me, they saw it immediately without any convincing. And then when you have them on board, then this whole story grew and grew because at Heineken what we do well is building brands, some other things we gotta improve in many areas. But that was, that was the buy-in, not really convincing. 
this is great. There is a huge potential here. Let's do this. It's opening up new territories for us as marketeers globally to tell the Heineken story, but not only about Heineken as the one consumer brand, but more about the 250 brands that we have in 70 countries. So there was a huge opportunity to showcase the true Heineken. And, and let me tell you also one thing. There was a lot of discussion about, yeah, should we show, funny enough, huh? should we show beer and brewers and brewing tanks? That was on the table at one point. It's like beer, controversial, alcohol, uh, brewing tanks. I said, yeah, but what do you want to show? <laughs> People behind the laptop are just, uh, we are brewers. That's what we do. We brew good beer and we sell good beer. That's it. And that's why you see in the wall of bottles many local brands. You see the guys in the brewing tanks on the matrix kind of scene. So it was about showing very proudly what we are about. And the marketeers bought totally into that. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for sharing this with us. Um, I am wondering, obviously, this has been created for an external audience and to, to bring in new candidates. Um, I'm curious, though, how has it landed internally, and what's the conversation that it's created with your existing employee base? Thank you. Yeah, it, it created a huge buzz in the organization, in every single office. We, the, when we discussed with the 20 countries, in the, with the local teams that were uh, working on the campaign, every single country launched internally first. We didn't go out without having starting a conversation with our own employees. So it was done in different ways, through events, through people taking the interviews. In some countries, they gave a bracelet with the, the personality profile so that we could spark a conversation, go to people with the same and different profile and talk about it. So there was a lot of buzz around the campaign by taking people through the experience. That was one. One example is the launch in Amsterdam where we had all our pioneers get together in the sneak preview, enjoy this, and we said, this is gonna be launched in a week. But for now, with the hashtag go places, you can do this in social media, in your personal profiles, whatever you want. And it created a huge pride as well. We did things like, like real size kind of posters in the office on the day of the launch, where we had all these pioneers not knowing in their office in the entrance, seeing themselves in like 1.5 meters. And you know, that staying there for like two months, it was amazing for them. So it created a huge, huge buzz in the organization, a lot of pride. Hi, my name is Ashley, um, and I would love to understand where you sit with employer brand in the broader organization, and then how, if you worked at all with your talent organization on this, and how you worked together, like what, how, how much of marketing were you leveraging within your own team, and then with the talent team, and what was the collaboration like? Great, thanks. It started from talent, so I, I was a talent acquisition guy at that time, so I'm in HR, I'm not in marketing. I'm in HR and I'm still in HR. So I was, I was uh, leading talent acquisition at the time and then it was started in HR, but you know, the conversation was not powerful enough until we opened that up to the full organization to rally everyone behind. Because in HR, I think we do have, in our organization, maybe in others as well, limited capability and limited skills to, to run a project like this. So that was the moment when really we started collaborating and everyone was bringing their own capacity. Now, the cool thing about this project, which I have to say, is that for all of us, we were first movers, starters. The agencies we chose, and that was a conscious choice, were not employer branding HR agencies, were creative agencies that we used for our brands. So for them, first day in the meeting room, it was like, we know nothing about employer branding or talent acquisition. And that's exactly what I wanted. It's people starting with no limiting thoughts, with an open mind. So I was contributing on the team on the talent acquisition and talent side, and they were putting everything on, on, on marketing and creativity. That's how we did it. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, wonderful campaign, first off. Um, there was a lot of metrics around uh, social performance, media engagement, really good like brand identity reputation. But did you have any um, information or way of tracking people who completed the interview? How many of those people actually got hired? And um, did it meet like any company needs as far as like diversity and things like that? Thank you. We, we did a little bit of tracking. We are far from being very good at that. And the reason is that we are very decentralized and we took people through an experience that we could control, like the Go Places website. So everything was kind of in control and we could track all the data. But out of that website, 
people would go to local instances and for security reasons and personal data reasons and many other reasons, we were not able to track them anymore. So it was a little bit patchy because it was more the countries that launched kind of telling us and pulling data about, you know, all these hires, all these candidates, they mentioned go places. And in fact, we started a conversation around that. But it was more manual and less thorough, to be very honest. So we have some data, but it's a little bit patchy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, two questions. First, how did you develop the person personality profiles? And then second, um, you know, the campaign's been in market for some time. Are you evolving it? Are you um, carrying out through other touch points besides digital and social? Yeah, thank you. So the first one, very good question, and we spent a lot of time in, in, in rooms thinking about this and talking about this. We wanted to make a, a true personality assessment profile and still we did not want to detract from the experience because first it was about engaging with people and second it was about giving them a personality profile and not the other way around. Which led us to think, should we get one of these big suppliers and try to build them in this, this, uh, this kind of interactive interview um, and looking at different suppliers we thought it's gonna be impossible because they're gonna come up with 100 questions, boring stuff, this is going to, be, going to make this not very sexy. So we went for ourselves, so the HR team, building a personality profile, a personality questionnaire. The way we did this to make it relevant for ourselves is we did that based on our brand DNA. So we took the three brand DNA values, fame, adventure, friends, and we took kind of personality traits that would be under those values. So under adventure, things like innovation, creativity, and we came up with 12 personality traits hanging from those three, and we created questions along the lines of those traits. So that basically what we are doing is a personality profile, cultural fit profile if you want, but we didn't want to put the stamp of you know, one of the big suppliers. We did it ourselves. And we don't want to claim that space. That's why we say, that's what we think, but it's up to you to interpret your, your personality profile. To your second question, the, that's a good one, is the evolution is so far, we don't know. We, we looked at the self life of this campaign to be about a year. So now we are coming to an, let's say to an end, and we want to work on the version two. What we feel is that we have a very big story of go places and a strong essence. The question is, from a creative perspective, what is the evolution of this story or the new story? And we don't know. We don't know. But one of the ideas could be to really track real time some of the new hires that are going places with Heineken and show that to the world. But there are different directions that we can take and hopefully next year we'll see uh, the next baby coming to life. Thank you. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, I'm gonna be around and I'll be very happy to, to connect and start a conversation. If you want to talk about your profiles, take your interview, Google Go Places Heineken and you can do it there, it's free. Thank you.